Welcome to this series called The West Wing of the Bible. And we're just working through The West Wing. What a great TV show The West Wing is. Oh, amazing. And we're halfway through season two, episode 22, The Two Cathedrals. And we've done Bartlett's blasphemous diatribe. Is that the right word? Yep. And um, there's this end bit which touches on, and Bartlett mentioned it, natural disasters, but he blames God for it. The ship turning over in the sea in a storm. She's going to mention natural disasters, and it's also brought up in season five in disaster relief as well. I don't think we need to play it because we, it's pretty much summed up here. Watch this one. I lost four kids on my route yesterday. I think what I've done is this is season five, episode six, disaster relief, and I've put it with the Bartlett clip because he's also mentioned natural disaster. That's yeah, what's happened. That's what's this happened. isn't the same episode. This is yeah. a different one. I just forgot that I did it. Yeah. At first, you're just you're just glad it's not your kids, but you gotta wonder what kind of a god would do such a terrible thing. We go to church every Sunday. We try to do the right thing. What kind of a plan could this possibly be? We need to be careful here because this is very emotive. Um, and people listening may have lost loved ones to such events. Um, I begin with a caution on, again, trying to make the case before God that we deserve better. Because Bartlett did that in his rant. Mm -hmm. His whole rant against God, the essence was, we deserve better. But yet, on the flip side, he says that he's also committed many sins. Mm -hmm. So it's, it doesn't follow through that sort of, we deserve better. I think, if we're all honest, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Um, but... A lot of the suffering in the world is us mistreating each other and going against what God wills for us. And we touched on that in the last episode with Bartlett's rant. Natural disasters. I'll ask you about that in a minute, Paul. But sometimes we build in areas that we know have fault lines running through them. We know and we've still done it. And often it's been driven by greed. Sometimes we've cut corners in our construction work because of greed. Mm. It's, even this area isn't clear cut, let's always blame God for everything. Mm. Human error permeates so much of even these apparent natural disasters. However, those things notwithstanding, you've got some thoughts, haven't you? I think it's that we kind of imagine that we're in Eden sometimes. That it, we were not in a fallen world. Like in the Garden of Eden, where the way God designed us and dreamed of us at the beginning, that original thing, there, isn't, there aren't any, not any disasters, no death, no disease, no decay, no demons, nothing. In that environment, uh, if there was something, if, you know, the, 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 it's inconceivable that there's going to be anything horrible happen. But we're not in that world. We're in this broken world that's this present darkness, as the Bible calls it. This, um, and there's this way in which, oh, it's a crisis. Sometimes it says we're in a crisis at the moment. And there's this sense in which we're alienated from God, we're exiled. And in a way, the Bible's like cut off from the life of God. Like we're exiled from the life of God. Death, brokenness darkness everything and it should be like why isn't why why is there so much goodness and light and joy because it's as if the lord's like oh you've gone away from me into a far country and like in, into the pigsty but i i can't let i can't i just i love you so much that i'm actually gonna protect you from most bad things you will actually experience lots of joy, lots of happiness, lots of blessing. I'm going to do that. I can't help myself sort of thing. And Jesus says he has the sunshine, the rainfall. All these blessings happen to people regardless of whether they're 
loving God or not sort of thing. And God's like that. But nevertheless, there is this way in which he knows because we're broken inside. And that's our biggest problems. Our biggest problems, like often they'll go, the problem of evil is external bad things. The Bible teaches us, no, the very worst things are the inside bad evil, not the outside evil. Because the Bible teaches us over and over again in the lives of people, not least the life of Jesus, that you can lose all the external blessings and yet, yet have what really matters. Or Paul is in prison, he's lost everything. All he wants at one point is can I just have like a, a warm jumper or something? Um, and he's lost everything, and yet he's got everything that really matters. And that inside thing. And what the Lord knows with us is because we're so lost inside, that if we live a lot, like if we're not woken up and shaken, woke uh, what we tend to do is forget God completely. And he, Jesus said, look, life is so easily like this big, broad highway. And everyone's just going along it, totally distracted by the busyness of life, the good things, the pledges and treasures. And then over the cliff at the end into, a, into hell forever kind of thing. Lost eternity. And he's like, I'm going to in lots of ways that are painful, shake that up and force you to go, whoa, hang on, what's going on? What's going on? Why is this happened? What's, why is life, I could die. I've lost people, all these things. And it's, I think, was it C.S. Lewis had something to do with shouting in, so, what was that one? The megaphone. Yeah, go on, do you know that one? Suffering is God's megaphone from heaven. They, okay, something that, like that. yeah, something like that, innit? That so, like when suffering, we kind of I can't hear God. Then in in suffering, people do hear Him, and uh, you know people's biographies and things. They quite often find that in the depths, at the lowest point, they so then they're like, Lord God, if you're there, will you hear me? And then He does, and He's close to the brokenhearted and draws near to those crushed in spirit. And it'd be lovely if we were better than that. And that we came near to him and shouted out to him with proper desperation in the good times. But how often do we do that? Let's just be honest with ourselves. In me too, I know I pray better and draw near to him with greater urgency when things are falling apart. I know it shouldn't be like that, but it is. And there's a bit in Habakkuk 3 as well, isn't it, you were going to mention? I do. It's like this thing when Paul wants to talk about justification by faith say and he says oh it, back in Habakkuk righteous people live just by trusting the Lord and in the context it's not like in the context of oh uh, I, I'm, I want to make sure I've got enough righteousness in heaven or something in the context Habakkuk's like life sucks and there's so many bad things happening that's the NIV is it that's the NIV, yeah. No, I think it's the ESV, actually, yeah. <laughs> if only. Um, yeah, no, no. no. But in Habakkuk, he's like, look at all the evil going on. So many evil people doing evil things and what's God doing? And then God's like, don't worry, I'm going to send even more evil. And he's like, what? And then he's like, I don't know what to do in this. I'm surrounded by evil and suffering and life's just falling apart. And what he says is, actually... The, the right response in this, to the way a, uh, you live in, in the right way with God, is to just trust him. That he knows what he's doing and that he, in fact, cares more than you do. And then sometimes in these sort of clips, it's the idea of God doesn't care, but I care. It's like, nah, don't say that. He cares more than you and trust him on that. And so Habakkuk 3 ends with... Habakkuk said, okay, I, I look at it differently now. Even if everything falls apart, everything, and even the whole of creation itself unravels around me, still I'm okay if I've got him. It's all good if I've got him. And he's in control. I trust him. Big topics. So that was 
Or do you ever just say um, to people, or do you ever hand out literature or make literature that just simply says, we're all evil, he's got every white to write, but now he's furious with us. You better repent. You ever do that? Uh, I, I, I don't think I've ever done anything quite as stark as that, because I think though there's certain truth in that idea that, yeah, you know, we are evil and the consequences, you know, the punishment, souls that sins will die, it's only what we deserve. It misses the character of God. I it? think so, because in the way I'd want to also say, yeah, that's true, but the, this is the God who says, let me come down, let me come down and let me take the worst of it more than you can even imagine and die a cursed death and let me go to hell instead of you. Like, it's as if he wants to rush in and say, that's true, but this. Yeah. Our cameraman has just shouted out, but you may have not picked it up, so I'll repeat it. The righteous suffer. But he said a bit more than that. Shout it out again. Um, Do you want to come in the shop? Yeah, come in the shop and come say on. what you're going to say. Get in the shop. Just uh, say it. Oh, okay. Well, uh, this is Jonathan, our cameraman. Ah. Uh, hello. Yeah. Come, oh, in. Yeah. Come, in. come in. Come in. Let's have lower. you. Yeah. Um, kneel in front of yeah. us, please. <laughs> I will. Um, I was just uh, making the point that both in the example of Job and Habakkuk, um, and particularly with Job's friends, they had this mentality that I need to, I want to get close to God, I want to be righteous in order to avoid suffering. But the big lesson that Job is kind of having to go through and the friends is actually, no, we need to be close to God through the suffering. And it's the same for Habakkuk. Like he's finally saying, oh no, suffering is coming. That can't be avoided. That's why I need to be close to God to survive it. And uh, so it's just a big thing in the Bible that we shouldn't try to bribe God to avoid suffering. Actually, we need him as we're going to go through it, like Jesus. Uh, he knows he's got to be close to the Father as he's going to die. It's not to avoid the cross, it's actually to get through it. Wow. Um, something like that. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Camp. More than just a cameraman. Mm. That was season five episode six disaster relief with a special guest appearance we'll see you at the next one